Alright everyone, welcome back to yet another exciting uh, lesson of learning C++. We just went over the dangers of dangling else's, and now I'm, I'm going to talk just sort of briefly. I want to check the Reddit page to, uh, to make sure that I'm kind of on par with what I want. Okay, so yeah, um, I did want to cover nested loops. And I'm going to actually use my uh, my C++, like my intro to C++ final, which was surprisingly easy, as an example of that. Um, this is a question I honestly see about three to four times a week when I'm helping out on Yahoo Answers. People want to output data like this. They want a program that does something like this. One, ah, uh, crap, I'm just going to have to... Okay. Let's just pretend the stars aren't at the beginning of these lines. Okay, they want something that outputs like that. So, you know, you count up, and then you count downwards. Now, there is a way to do this, and it's using uh, for loops, nested for loops even. And I'm going to show you the logic behind it. You know, this sort of thing will actually just about never come in handy. The real thing of that I want you to take away is more, you know, learning how to manipulate uh, a for loop. I think that that's going to be a, a much more interesting and kind of uh, difficult for you guys to really... I don't want to say understand because no one here is, you know, dumb by a long shot. But I think it's just going to be uh, helpful for you guys to sort of see how this works. So we're going to allow the user to use our choice variable from last one, and we're going to say, um, how many digits do you want to use? I do want to just mention as a little caveat, if you go above 10 here, it looks kind of ugly, um, because 10 is two digits, so then you have two digits longer at the end. It doesn't really look right, but um, that's just a little caveat. Okay, and so then we're going to see in for choice. Now, we're going to need two variables, and we can declare them out here if we want. Um, I suppose we will. And we'll just do i and j. i is going to be the counter of our first loop, and j is going to be the counter in our second. We're going to be using four counter controlled loops. Um, each one is going to be nested two loops deep. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a structure something like this. We're going to do four and four and we're going to use both of those and we're going to close both of those out. We're going to have two more down here. Four and four. So the reason why is we're going to be using one set of loops to count up to five. So we're going to use one set of loops to count up to five. And then we're going to use one set of loops to count down from five. And that's going to be pretty easy for you. Um, once you see how I do it, you know, you can pause the video right here if you want, and you can give it a shot. Um, it might be tricky, it might not. You might blow yourself away and find that you can do it. Um, so if you want, you can stop me, but I'm going to continue now. Okay, so we're going to start, and we're going to say 4i equals 0. i is less than, um, we can just use choice. And we're going to do i++. plus plus then we're immediately going to say for j equals zero j is less than i j plus plus and now i want you guys to remember how a uh a for loop works now that we're within this scope it is not going to get out of this scope until it completes its loop each time so what I'm going to do is C out for J, which means that if I is equal to 1, J is going to run once, it's going to come, it's going to, to spit out J, 
and then it's going to go back through. And each time it does that, say i is 2, j is going to come through, it's going to spit out 1, 2. And so then it's going to come through again, and uh, you, I think you guys get the idea. But since we wanted everything on a different line, see how we have, you know, 1, then 1, 2, then 1, 2, 3. Each one has to be on a different line, and you can't control that within the inner loop. Um, I'm just going to label these. Outer loop and inner loop. And then I'm actually going to mention here, end inner loop and outer loop. So what we're actually going to need to do here is add an end L. And so every time it comes through the end of its own loop in increments by one, it's also adding a blank line. Now let's just run it once and see what we have so far. Okay, let's say five. Ooh, that didn't quite work how I wanted it to, now did it? Um, in this case, what I should have been doing is I should have started at one because I wanted it to... Uh, to run a certain way. Um, I didn't really need the number uh, 0 in there. And I should be using less than or equal to i as a result. And that should solve my little issue there. And uh, no, not 5 up there. We'll hit 5. And so that gets us 1, 2, 3, 4. Again, close, but not quite what we're going for. So then we need to make that less than or equal to choice. And that's kind of the joy of C++. You can tinker around a, a good amount. And then, okay, we've got our 1 to 5 down. Um, I actually think that I can get rid of that less than or equal to on J and B. All right, I think. Nope, I lied. You need it in both. <laughs> okay. Um, this is also, you know, proof that I don't make these lessons before I give them to you guys. Now, all right, I just want to run this one more time to show you guys that it works, because I'm going to give you guys the other half of this assignment, uh, or the other half of this as an assignment. Um, line break, and see out present counter for J. As you can see, I have commented the bejesus out of this. Um, just so you know everything that's going on throughout this little loop. Um, and I've done this to kind of give you guys a fighting shot. Because finishing off this assignment is going to be your homework. Um, you know, it's not fair, I don't like doing homework. I know. Uh, that's why I give you guys the answers in about another five minutes. So, um, I'm going to leave it off here. And I'm hoping that you guys can see well enough what I've done in this single loop to be able to manipul uh, manipulate your own loop. And maybe, um, I'm hoping, kind of get it to the point where you can uh, acceptably, you know, just knock it out on the, uh, the return down from 5 in this case. You can use any number. I mean, I can change that to 7 and it'll work. The same, it'll just extend out a little further. It's the same idea. It's that same kind of pyramid-y shape. So, or well, half pyramid shape. Um, for now, I'm going to leave it. Good luck, and I'll see you in uh, Exercise 17B.